Hi, today I'm going to go over some uh, selected problems from the 12-4 homework assignment. And uh, the first one I'm going to start off with is, I'm going to give you a few hints on some of the easier problems. Some of these you really don't probably need a hint, but uh, first one I'm going to start off with is number five, these exercise balls. Two different balls, uh, exercise balls, the ratio of the diameters Diameter is really what makes this uh, worthy of a hint. Um, is 15 to 11. When you think of diameters, what does that mean? There are two different dimensions of the ball. So really, when, you th when you're comparing dimensions, it's already in a ratio. The ratio of the diameters is exactly the same thing as saying scale ratio. Uh, so diameter ratio, let me write this. The diameter ratio is the scale ratio, and that is equal to 15 over 11. Um, so you can just use this scale ratio. Uh, they, they gave you one of the diameters. So really, you can just use this in your proportion. You can just say the scale ratio, 15 over 11, is equal to 55. Uh, you just need to decide where does the 55 go? Does it go on the top or the bottom? And it's the smaller one, so that gives you a big clue. Does it go on the with the smaller of the two or the bigger one? And of course, it's going to be the smaller one. And you're really looking for the diameter of the larger one. Once you find the larger diameter, uh, let's just say diameter of the bigger one. Once you find the diameter of the big one, you cut that in half, and then you get the radius of the bigger one. Once you have the radius, then you can use uh, the formula for the volume of the bigger one. And we already know that volume formula is V is equal to, was it, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So you would just plug in rb in for r, and then you're done. OK, so that was number five. Let's go down a few problems to number 12. Two spheres have surface areas of what is given here. One of them is 100 pi square centimeters, the other is 16 pi square centimeters. And what you want to really find is the ratio of the volume. That is what you're looking for. And notice, this isn't a typical problem because you have surface areas given. What can you do with surface areas? You, If you have both of them, you can compute the area ratio pretty easily. So let's just take the first one on top, second one on the bottom. What do you get? You get six, uh, 100 over 16, which let's say that reduces by a factor of 4. So that reduces to 25 over 4. And the, the hint I'm going to give you for this one, I'm not going to work the whole problem, is what you really want is the volume ratio. Um, so once you find once you find the volume ratio, you're done. That is your answer. But first, how do we go from area ratio to scale uh, to volume ratio? To go from area to volume, you really want to first go to your scale ratio. So my hint is get the scale ratio from your area ratio. Once you have the scale ratio, uh, then you use that to obtain your volume ratio. That is my hint. I don't really want to work out um, how to get the scale ratio and how to get the volume ratio. You can get that from the notes. But notice, when you do reduce your area ratio, these numbers are nice and easy to work with. So that is another clue right there as to what you need to do. Area ratio, remember, is an area is a square measurement. Uh, scale ratio is not. So these are already squared. Okay, so the first one I want to, the next one I want to do, I mean, is the, the bottom of the page, number 14. And the reason why this one is a little bit complicated is because we have two different mm, uh, units. The height of one prism is six yards. The height of the other prism is nine feet. Well, that's kind of annoying because one of them is in yards and one of them is in feet. If the volume of the first prism is... 810 cubic yards, what's the volume of the other prism? And what I really wish this question would say is um, find it in cubic yards. 
So the easiest way to approach this problem, you can do it many ways, but I'm going to do it what I feel is the easiest way. And just use yards for everything. This one is in yards. This was in cubic yards. The only outlier that we really should change, in my opinion, is changing uh, 9 feet into something in yards. So the height of the first one, um, height number 1, is given as 6 yards. Height of the second one is 9 feet. And if we could just convert feet into yards, we would be happy. How many feet are in a yard? I know one yard is three feet. And if you write this little conversion factor, this is the way I always like to do it. Ever since I was taught this in chemistry class, I've been using this the rest of my life. Feet cancels feet. You're left with only one unit left, which is in yards. Nine times one is nine. 3 times, if you want to say a 1, that's fine. 3 times 1 is 3. What you really have is 3 yards. So if you know your height is uh, 6 yards and your other height is 3 yards, this is really a pretty easy problem. From there, you can get your scale ratio. Your scale ratio is just 6 over 3, which reduces to 2 to 1. And then just get your volume ratio. Um, you want to compare one volume to the other. So you will need your volume ratio. And then you will need a proportion. Proportion. So those are uh, enough hints to get you started. That one really isn't that bad, ex except for converting feet to yards, in my opinion. The rest is pretty straightforward. OK, so that was three problems on the first side of the homework. I'm going to go over two more selected problems. These are a little longer, because I'm going to go through the entire solution, because um, they, are, they are a little harder. Two suitcases just happen to be similar rectangular prisms. So yeah, that's kind of the way suitcases usually are. They're rectangular prisms, like boxes, basically. The smaller one, we have all three dimensions, the length, the width, and the, the depth, or the height. And the other one, we only know the length. So we know the length for each, how long they are for the smaller, and how long they are for the bigger. This one happens to be bigger, right? What is the scale factor? Well, scale factor, you want to compare like to like. So we're going to compare length of the first to length of the second, which is 68 over 85. Those are the only two things that we have right now that are corresponding to each other. We can reduce this uh, by what? A factor of 17, I believe. So that reduces to 4 fifths. And that is your scale factor. OK, so that was letter A. What is the volume of the larger one? Well, we kind of need to know the volume of one of them in order to find the volume of the other. So what I'm going to do is find the volume of the small one. Volume of the small one is just really length times width times height, or, or depth, as they're calling it. So it's just really all three numbers um, multiplied. Oops. Let me change that number. That was supposed to be a 47. 68 times 47 times uh, 27. Multiply all these three numbers together. You get uh, 86 to 92. Just checking my math. I did this math earlier. And OK, so that's the volume of the small. And we're going to use that to find the, lar the volume of the larger. What I'm going to use is that scale factor then gives me, uh, sorry, scale factor or scale ratio. I usually call it scale ratio, but scale factor, basically the same thing. Scale factor, scale ratio is 4 fifths. What is the volume ratio? You're going to take that scale ratio 
and raise it to the third power because volume is a cubic measurement. It's a third three-dimensional measurement. When you raise four-fifths to the third power, you get 64 over 125. That is my volume ratio that I will then use in a proportion. You don't need to write the word proportion, but I'm going to write it anyway. Uh, and I'm going to try to write these numbers. 64 over 125 is equal to, okay, I had the smaller volume. Smaller goes with small, so they both go on top. 86, 292. And what I'm really looking for is the volume of the bigger one. So solve for volume of the bigger one. You get 125 times that 86,000 number is equal to 64 times the volume of the bigger one. Cross multiply, divide both sides by 64. You get the volume of the bigger one is equal to, and this one we're going to round off to the nearest uh, tenth. And it's going to be 168, comma 539.1. And I'm running out of room, but I really know this is in cubic centimeters, uh, like the other one was, cubic centimeters. So the volume of the bigger one was that. Okay, so just make sure the volume of the smaller one really was smaller. It was 86,000. This is 168,000. So, yeah, um, roughly twice as big in volume. Okay, and I'll do one more, which is the next one, number 20. Let me try to straighten this out. No, wrong way. Um, number 20 will be my last one. This one is surface area, not volume. What makes this one tough is it says surface area, but surface area really means the area of all the surfaces that are exposed. How many uh, sides or faces are exposed? Well, you have this rectangular prism on the bottom. There's normally six sides to a prism, a rectangular prism. We can see all the four sides, and you can see the bottom base. The top base, however, is not exposed, so we are not going to count that as an exposed surface that we can find the area of. So just one base plus the lateral area, in other words. For the pyramid, it's just the lateral area. The one base that it does have, again, is not something we can see. So we're going to say uh, what we ultimately want to find is the surface area of this smaller solid. What I'm going to do is find the surface area of the bigger solid and then scale it down using my scale ratio that I will obtain later. First though, surface area of the bigger solid. I'm going to say first I have a prism and the prism lateral area is perimeter of the base of that prism times the height between the bases um, plus, like I said, only one base is exposed so this is my surface area of just the prism. I have another one for the pyramid. Pyramid uh, is really just lateral area this time. And lateral area, remember, is one half perimeter of the base of the pyramid times the, s s sorry, that is not right. Uh, it's the slant height of the pyramid. That's not supposed to be an L. Perimeter times slant height. So here is your uh, whole formula. Uh, surface area of the bigger solid is equal to perimeter of the pr uh, prism times the height of the prism plus the one base that we can see of the prism plus the lateral area for the pyramid. Um, and uh, let's do that. So what do we get? surface area of the bigger solid is. What's the perimeter of the prism? We have 14 all, all the way around. It's a square. So it's going to be 14 times 4, or 4 times 14, either way, times the height. The height is 12. And what is the area of the base? Again, it's 14 times 14. I'm just going to say 14 squared. And that was just the prism. What about the pyramid? One half 
the perimeter around the base of the pyramid is exactly the same as it was for the uh, prism. 14 times 4. And then the slant height. Do we have the slant height given? Yes, we do. That 15 is the slant height. So there we go. If you multiply all this together, uh, multiply this, add it to 14 squared, add it to the lateral area of the pyramid, you get the total surface area of the bigger solid as being a nice uh, whole number, 1288. Then what? I wasn't even interested in the surface area of this, the bigger one, right? I wanted the surface area of the smaller one. What I'm going to do is get a scale ratio because I do have some similar, uh, I, I do have some corresponding sides that I can use. This 14 corresponds to this 12, that 14 to that 12, so it's, it's the same thing. So my scale ratio is really 14 to 12, which reduces, of course, to 7 over 6. And we're talking about surface area. So really, instead of a scale ratio, I'm more interested in an area ratio. So take your scale ratio squared, 49 over 36. This 49 over 36 then starts off your proportion for finding the missing surface area. 49 over 36. 1288 was the bigger surface area, so I need to put it on the same half as the, the bigger of these, which is the top. The surface area of the smaller one is really what I'm looking for. You can call this x, or I'm just going to call it surface area for small. After you cross multiply 36 times 1288, uh, small surface area times 49, divide both sides by 49. So this is just cross multiplying to solve your proportion. You get the smaller surface area is equal to 946. Rounded to the nearest tenth, it doesn't say, or does it? No, it doesn't, but I'm gonna do it to the nearest tenth anyway. 946.3 centimeters, uh, square centimeters. So that is how you do uh, this one, number 20. And that is the last one I will go over. Hopefully that was helpful to everyone.